Good morning, folks. We are entering a period of solar calm. Not only do we lack big flares and CMEs, but those southern filaments look stable and are departing. The closest thing we have to incoming activity is a tiny area on the south there. Your eyes don't deceive you, but let's come check out the flaring charts anyway. Yep, nada since yesterday's departing shot. The only spots remaining are heading out up north, and they remain magnetically simple. The more intense solar wind from yesterday has leveled off, still above average speed, but that stability is keeping instability in our shield at a minimum. So we've been discussing this for days. The corona holes incoming gained power, then they lost power. And the earth factors for earthquakes plummeted as the tropical storms began surging. But this corona hole has gained back a bit of force this morning in the northern areas. Red, returning on the solar wind speed graphic. Here are some of those tropical events in the Pacific. Hawaii, need to keep an eye on that one to the south. In the United States, the top story remains the hurricane effects at the east coast. Major flooding, homes and buildings destroyed, lives lost. Could you imagine if it had made direct landfall? Mega low pressure cell in the North Atlantic dictates the worst weather will come to the UK and Ireland along the convergence line today. Antarctic lows riding south of Australia and New Zealand, but with the clouds shifting up to the southern coastlines today. Folks, today is the day. Our community has always struggled with proof, recognition, convincing the mainstream. But today, two of our papers are published in New Concepts of Global Tectonics, and our friend Kong Papu Yen, who wrote one of them with me, has a second one of his own as well. Our first paper is the foundational one, demonstrating that we can monitor solar magnetic fields and see how they trigger earthquakes. Our second paper uses a similar but slightly different method of solar wind speed analysis to demonstrate the exact same thing for this Chile disaster from mid-September. And when you read that second paper, if you go check it out for yourself, remember that these graphics showing solar wind speed are valid as of the second date on top from the left. So today is October 5th, but it says October 8th in the line at the bottom and on top of the chart. But it is indeed the October 5th chart. This is vital if you are reviewing paper number two. This is just one of the topics to be described at Observing the Frontier. Just 12 days away, the observers descend on Pittsburgh. And folks, we have confirmed that both Bruce Laybourne and August Dunning will be joining our Phoenix event in January. More details coming there as well. We've got pressure and precipitable water as your current conditions, then shots of our star to close. Last chance to get your tickets to Observing the Frontier in Pittsburgh, especially if you're attending the Saturday lunch Q&A. That deadline is just four days away. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.